What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's the King Koopa. Thank you for stopping by. So on today's video, we are on a quest to remove our cloth bench seat and swap it out with a leather bucket seat and a center console. I haven't seen too many single cabs with a center console, so I'm super happy for this mod. This whole setup did cost me under $300 to do the swap, and it actually took me quite a few months to find some bucket seats that were pretty cheap and in decent condition, but we did find them at a local pick apart. And if you missed my last video, we got the new two inch cowling hood with the color matched grills on, so be sure to check that out. It really completes the front end of the truck, makes it look really nice, clean, makes it look super fast, I think, in my opinion. Definitely beefs it up a little bit. This is kind of a little bit of a long video, but if you are interested in swapping the bucket seats, then it'll definitely be worth your while. And if you're just here for the adventures, I hope you guys enjoy. And I just want to say I appreciate you watching my videos, and please hit that subscribe button. So let's head to the junkyard, find us some seats, and start modifying the truck. All right, here we are. Here's the truck. It's 2005. It's got the 5.3 in it, iron block. We're gonna have a little bit of challenges to do this one. Let's check out the inside. <laughs> All right, so here is the seat. So we do have a tear here. We got a little pinhole on that one. And that one ain't too bad, but the center console's in nice shape. And it has the electric seat, so the whole harness is here. So we're gonna be uh, pulling all that out. And we're gonna be taking the dash out too, since mine's cracked. This truck is definitely dirty. But uh, a little razor blade, but should make for a good transformation. All right, got our first two pieces out. It's rock and rolling. Alright, we got it all loaded up literally as they closed. They closed at 5, we got there at like 5.05. .05. They had locked the door on us and locked us inside the yard. But th thankfully this one over here is hauling it. So let's check it out. Got the door panel, the center console, and both seats. All the trim pieces, dash pieces, everything. 122 bucks out the door. Alright, I already got the dogs testing out the seats. Being my little models, huh? Good girls, all done. Scott, let's roll. <laughs> also, just a little side note, if you are wanting to do this modification, don't be discouraged. It's really not that hard. It is pretty time consuming though. There's only eight bolts holding your seats in. Your center jump seat and the center console does share the inside bolts on both seats. So the easiest way to remove your seats Pull the seats back, remove the front two bolts on both sides. Push the seats forward, remove the four bolts in the back. You will have a connector underneath each seat, and then after that, the seats will just pull right out. And remember, if you're putting your seats back in, the jump seat or the center console goes in first. They align on the bolts, and then your seats go on top of those brackets. So we're figuring out the wiring for our electric seats. Obviously, the seats aren't a direct plug-and-play because there is no power and ground running to the seats because I had the cloth bench seat. Here is the donor harness we pulled out of that old truck. We're currently cutting the harness apart, getting all the stuff out of it that we don't need, because realistically, all that you need are these two wires right here. The orange is a thick power wire, black is a thick ground wire. There is two inside this harness, you're going to need both of them, so that way we can apply power to the seats and ground the seats.
Now that we have our two power wires and our two ground wires with the connectors on them, we're going to lay it out on the truck, get it all lined up how we like it. Then we're going to splice them into our harness and fix some of those electrical tape connections. Here's the finished product of splicing the two harnesses together. As you can see, it looks just like factory. Orange is power wire, black is the ground wire, and now it plugs directly into the new seats, no problem. Now we're about to take our old shifter lever out and replace it with our offset 4x4 shifter lever. It is pretty easy to remove the 4x4 shifter. There's a pin right here holding it in place. You're gonna remove that cotter key or the cotter pin on this far front of the side. That pin will push out but you can't get it all the way out so you'll have to shift the gearbox forward and then there is your pin this will come out you'll turn it rotate it forward and rotate it up and out and there we go get the new one in same way turn rotate it down in and then rotate it straight slide it in and then we'll slide our pin up in there now we'll put our new cotter key in and if you are wondering about this cover, you do not have to put the cover on first and then this. You can put the shifter arm on and then this gap right here, you can just lightly squeeze it apart. Just pry it a little bit and it slides right over the top of that knob. Next part is probably going to be the hardest part of the entire swap. We are going to be notching our center console out. So we're going to have to make a bunch of templates and always remember measure twice, cut once. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, measure, measure, measure because if you cut this too big or too far out, then uh, you're going to mess your center console up and then it's ruined. I actually made two templates. One was too small, so we have this one right here. And make sure every time you use your template, you have the same reference points. So always flat on the bottom, flat on the sides. And we did use a Sharpie. Sharpie will come right off with acetone or uh, some nail polish remover. We already test set the console on top of the shifter, so we definitely need to trim it out. So we're going to make a small little arch cut here. Make sure it's still good. We're going to test fit it again. Then we're going to cut it wider, test fit it again. We're probably going to do that like three or four times until this is perfect. That way it is a uh, nice perfect fit because we don't want it to have mad gaps. heads up for when you do trim this this is a double layered section so there's two pieces of plastic right there you have the inside shell and then you have this outside skin and you do have these little plastic anchor pieces that go in this top hole right here that are supposed to keep that skin tight to the inside shell but there are actually two little tabs that hook in to the inside shell they actually have to cut to get this notched out so this bottom piece is actually pretty floppy to fix that I did use some double-sided Gorilla tape two pieces right here and a piece back here and I had them clamp for about five minutes to make sure they stay nice and strong. And then we're still going to insert this little plastic anchor up in the top. Now we're going to install the lower dash pieces. This one is out of the donor truck. And this is the glove box out of my truck. So we're going to drill these rivets out, swap glove boxes. That way I'm going to still have the correct info sticker on the inside. Then I'll get these cleaned up and put in the truck. Now that we have the seats out, it would be a great time for you to inspect your seats, make sure they're not cracked or up to standards on how you want them to look. My lowers were all torn up and cracked and faded, so we bought a new leather skin, and we decided to go with a new seat foam as well, and I'm really glad I did because you can tell there's a huge difference on how the foam interacts with each other. If your bottom seat color leather is worn out, your seat cushion's probably worn out too. And there are a lot of how-tos on YouTube. There's pretty easy to get the seat to this point. I mean, it takes like 10 minutes. The hardest part is getting the seat out of the truck. I believe this seat cushion was 70 bucks, and I believe the leather cover was almost 70 bucks as well. So for 140 bucks, I'll be pretty happy with the outcome. We just finished installing our new foam pad and the outside leather. Now, the next thing we have to do is cut our hole to install our switch panel. And it would be a great time now to clean all these out, get all the dirt and debris out and stuff like that while you have it off. 
We want to cut out just enough to where we can get it by these screws to mount it on. We're about to install our new lower cushion with the switches installed. But before you do, it would be a great time to get all this cleaned up, wiped down, use an air hose, blow it all out. Then once you have it cleaned out, throw some extra grease on all these little gears, pulleys, the seat tracks. And then once you get it in the truck, you want to move it all the way forward, all the way back, all the way lean back, all the way lean forward, just so that it gets everything greased up and lubed up. Just a little preventative maintenance. To install this lower cushion, it's pretty simple. You just line these two little pins down at the bottom, you slide it on, and then you shove it forward, and these two bolts run right through the top part of the seat bracket. I think that's starting to wrap it up for this video guys I mean I'm pretty happy with this especially to get rid of the old bench seat that didn't fold down that was the deal breaker for me and primarily why I really wanted to get the center console I'm pretty happy with the bucket seats I mean for under 300 bucks for buying them the new leathers and the new cushions and stuff like that and wiring it all up and everything so I'm actually really happy with it I enjoy it they're nice they're comfy they do sit up a little bit taller which I'm okay with that but we are going to have to do something with my window tent on the windshield because it is a little excessive and now that you do sit up a little bit higher, uh, that window tent goes in my line of sight just a little bit. So we're going to have to change the window tent up. But I think it really dresses this truck up really nice, really takes it from the work truck base model to a luxury truck in my opinion because there's not really too many single cabs with a center console in it. Especially now that we put the 120 square foot of Dynamat in, the full sound system in, it's really starting to come together. Hopefully next we'll finish up the headliner, we'll wrap up all these gauges and the nitrous here soon. So I just wanted to say thank you for all the views, the subscribes, the comments, I appreciate it, all the shares, everything. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Stay tuned for some new content. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability and as always all the links to all the products and stuff that I bought are in the description below hope you guys are having a great day and I'll catch you later